ND filters are one of the most common accessories that creators use to get the cinematic look. However, there is a major problem with ND filters because if you get bad quality filters, well, you'll see a color shift in your footage. So in this video, we're gonna dig into this problem and I wanna show you what to look out for when you're getting ND filters for your camera. Now, I wanna say a special thanks to Nisi for sponsoring this video and I'll talk about their true color filters later on in this video. Now, using a color checker chart like this really lets you see the difference in colors. And I think it's a good idea just for creators to have one of these on hand to test out if there is differences between filters you're using or lenses or anything else that might be affecting the color of your footage. These are super cheap and they even make a smaller one that can just fit in your bag to take with you anywhere. But let's have a discussion about why you need ND filters because there's a common misconception about what ND's purpose is. And the best way to think about what ND does for your camera, sunglasses. Essentially, you're just putting sunglasses on the front of your lens. But what's the purpose of that? Well, if you wanna get cinematic looking footage, you wanna shoot at a shutter speed that's double that of your frame rate. And when you do that, you're letting a ton of light into your sensor. So you're gonna to have to bring down the brightness to get the proper exposure. Now you can close down your iris, but the issue with that is you're now gonna have a ton of depth of field. You're gonna be able to see a lot in the distance. And oftentimes when you're trying to get that cinematic look, you wanna have shallow depth of field. You wanna have things razor thin. Right now I'm shooting at a 1.8, so the background's blurred. And that look of having blurriness in the background is what a lot of creators want in their footage. So to be able to do that, you have to open up your aperture. Now the only other thing that you can do internally in your camera is change your ISO. And even if you bring that down to the lowest ISO that you have possible, you're still gonna have a super bright image. And that's where ND filters come in. So ND filters, sunglasses in front of your camera, and they bring down your exposure. So right now I have the Nisi ND filter on my lens, and that's allowing me to get a good exposure sitting here in direct sunlight with my shutter speed at 1 60th because I'm shooting at 30 frames per second, my aperture's at a 1.8, and my ISO is at 400. Now, if you're shooting in S-Log or another log format, you'll wanna shoot at the base ISO and you won't wanna shift from that base because the base ISO is where you're gonna get the most dynamic range and the best noise performance. So you're really stuck to one or two ISOs when you're working in log footage. So this is why ND filters become so vital because if you're not using an ND filter and you wanna just crank up your shutter speed, well, you're gonna get this really jittery look. So I've just taken off the filter. I'm shooting at one eight thousandth of a second. It's crazy high shutter speed, but this is what you're gonna to have to do if you're filming in bright sunlight like this and you still want the blurry background. And so you can see as I move around, it feels jittery. Like to me, this is distracting. And even here on YouTube, when I see a video that's shot with a super high shutter speed, it just it becomes a distraction because it just looks like the creator doesn't necessarily know what they're doing with their camera. And they're just turning on the auto settings and just letting the shutter speed ride. As you get better, and if you want to have better looking footage, well, you wanna bring down your shutter speed. All right, so now I've added back on my variable ND filter and I'm shooting at 1 60th of a second. And the reason that you wanna shoot at double that of your frame rate is because you're gonna get motion blur. So when I freeze this frame right here, you'll see that my hand is blurred. That is motion blur. And when you shoot at double that of your frame rate, well, you're getting the proper motion blur that is natural to the human eye. And so it just feels a lot more natural and it doesn't become as distracting. And I know there's some of you out there that are gonna say, well, it doesn't matter here on YouTube. And yes, here on YouTube, you could get away with having high shutter speed, but as soon as you start doing client work, you start making videos for someone else, well, you definitely don't wanna have a high shutter speed because it just makes you look like you don't know what you're doing. So you wanna make sure that you always have the best looking footage and if you're watching this video, that means you actually care about getting better looking footage. 
So you always wanna to strive to shoot in the cinematic style where you're shooting at double that of your frame rate so that you can get some motion blur in your shot and make it feel a little more cinematic. Now, as I was saying earlier, as soon as you put something in front of your lens, well, you could create an issue. So ideally, you wanna have an ND filter that's not gonna create a color cast on the footage. So right now, I'm using the Nisi Variable ND, and these filters were designed to not have any sort of color cast on your footage. Now there's two options available. There is a one to five stop or a five to nine. And the cool thing about Nisi's system is that the five to nine is actually a four stop ND that clips on front. So it converts the one to five to a five to nine. So you never have to deal with screwing on or off that original one to five filter. Now this filter uses hard stops. So you're never gonna push it past five stops or below one stop. The issue is on other filters that don't have these hard stops is you could push it too far and it's gonna cause issues with your image and you'll see this kind of X pattern across the lens. Now there's a nano coating on these lenses for better performance when you're outdoor and on adventures. So if this lens gets splashed, the water's just gonna run right off and you're not gonna have issues. And this is super important to me because I'm out shooting outdoors all the time and there is times where my lens does end up getting wet. And one thing that's different about these indie filters is you have this additional lever that can be removed. So when you have it on your camera, it makes it super easy to adjust your ND without having to put your fingers anywhere near the glass. And a big thing for vloggers is that these are vignette free up to 16 millimeters. Oftentimes we'll use a 16 to 35 to shoot our vlogs. And so even when you're stopped down to five stops or nine stops, you won't get any vignetting in the corners. And the most important part about these filters is that there's supposed to be no color shift. So now what I wanna do is go through a comparison of a bunch of different brands of ND filters and look for these color casts to see what the difference is. Over the years, I've collected a ton of ND filters and I've definitely had issues with these color imbalances. So what we're gonna do is take the camera and have no filter on it and we'll go side by side and we're gonna just look at the difference between all of these. So here's our control. This is shot at a higher shutter speed, but this is just without any filters on the camera, proper exposure. So we're gonna use this color checker and just look around at the different colors of the greens in the trees, the blues in the skies behind me, and skin tones. That's what you're really looking for with all these color shifts. Now we can eyeball these shots and be able to see the difference in color shift, but to have a more scientific approach, we're gonna use what's called a vector scope. And you can see right here, this is all of the color values on a color wheel. You have red, magenta, blue, cyan, green, and yellow. And because we're using a color chart, you have these long straight lines that go from the center out to the edge. So center is no saturation and towards the edge is lots of saturation. So this is a clear way to be able to see how colors shift in an image. So right now we're seeing the Nisi filters and the control and I'll turn off the Nisi filters and then you'll see when I turn this on and off, the lines are matching up. Now let's move over to the moment filters and instantly you're seeing that there's a shift over to the more warm colors of this region. We're seeing all the colors here as the straight lines and this little chunk here is all the greenery that's around the color chart. So when I turn the moment filter off, you'll see that the whole color spectrum is shifted over towards more warmer colors. Now when we go to the Freewell filters, you'll see the same thing. They're all shifted more warm. We move to the Tiffin, the same, it's all shifted towards that left. We go to the Polar Pro Base Camp it's all shifted towards that yellow, green, and red. And then we look back at the Nisi filters and all the colors match up nicely between no filter and with the ND filter. 
Now, ND filters work great to get that cinematic look by being able to create a shallow depth of field with the proper camera settings. However, there's another filter that you can add that's gonna help create that cinematic look, and it's called a Black Pro Mist filter. So Nisi created a Black Pro Mist that works alongside these ND filters, and what this does is it creates a softening and a blooming effect around any lights in your shot. So if you have reflections or if you have physical lights like that tube back there, when you put this on your lens, it's gonna create a much softer feel around any of the lights that you see in your shot. And also with these filters, you typically see a little bit less contrast in your shot. So when you're filming, you wanna get more of that cinematic look. Adding the Black Pro Mist in front of your ND filter, it's gonna help enhance the shot and give it a different feel when you're using this kind of a filter. And both the Black Pro Mist and the ND filters that I've been using in this video are part of Nisi's Swift system. And it all fits nicely in this travel carry case. And the Swift system is a stackable filter system. So you have your ND filters or your Black Pro Mist and you can stack them together without having to actually screw them on. And so there's a bunch of different configurations that you can have depending on the types of filters that you need when you're out filming. There's the one to five variable ND filter, and then you can add on the four stop filter. You can add a black pro mist, and then there also is a UV IR cut filter that you can add as well. Now the system also just has an adapter ring, and this allows you to add like the black pro mist without having to screw on the variable ND filter. So the Swift system gives you a ton of flexibility to be able to have one set of ND filters and then switch them out depending on the scene that you're filming it. So going through and making this video and comparing all of these filters side by side really gave me a lot of insight into the things that we put in front of our lens and how important it is to make sure that we have ND filters that don't shift the color. I'm pretty impressed with the colors that I'm getting out of these Nisi filters. And if you wanna see more information about these ND filters or any other filters that Nisi offers, I'll put a link down below in the description. But next, you need to check out this video right here, which goes through a ton of tips on how you can craft better videos. I'll see you over there.